All right, let's work some examples. So suppose I've got a triangle. And this is a triangle that looks like this. So it's a right triangle. And we've decided this guy is my angle theta. And I've got a hypotenuse of 12 and a side of 9. And I am asked to find theta. Or sometimes that will say solve the triangle for the angle theta. So what do I know? I, I you know, we, we could do a little work here, but what, what I know is that I can remember Sokotoa. And what I have is the adjacent, the side adjacent to the angle and the hypotenuse. So I know that the cosine of my angle theta is equal to 9 twelfths. And we can reduce that to 3 fourths. Well, we'll just do it this way. And, and my angle is between, it's, my angle is less than 90 degrees. So theta, so theta falls within, actually, I want cosine. So theta falls within my uh, acceptable region for inverse cosine. Right, just because we can see that. It's definitely less than 180 degrees, so yeah. So what I'm looking for, so I know then that since, since this is true, and knowing this, I know that theta will equal the inverse cosine of 3 fourths. Now 3 fourths is not one of my special known unit circle values, so we'll use Desmos to take the inverse cosine of 3 fourths, and I get 0 0.7227. Now that's in radians. Typically on triangles, we're really gonna want degrees. So go up here to your little gear and change yourself to degrees. And Desmos tells you that the inverse cosine of 3 fourths is also 41.4096 degrees. Okay, so in the absence of special known unit circle values, calculator answers are going to be acceptable. But you need to know your unit circle because suppose you're asked to evaluate the inverse sine of the cosine of 13 pi over 6. And you think, piece of cake. I'll go to Desmos, and I will just put myself in radians, because I recognize that as a radian measure. And I can type in the inverse sine, wrong, the inverse sine of the cosine of 13 pi over 6. And you get 1.047, and you're going to get it wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because that 13 pi over 6, that's one of our special known unit circle values. So let's go find our unit circle. This guy. Okay, so our unit circle. So we remember that 13 pi over 6 is a known value. And but but why isn't it showing up on my unit circle? Well, because 13 pi over 6 is coterminal with pi over 6. So 13 pi over 6 is bigger than 2 pi, so we'll subtract that off, and we get pi over 6, which means that this is our point right here. So what we are, so the inverse sine of the cosine of 13 pi over 6, so the inverse sine 
of the cosine of 13 pi over 6 is going to be the same thing as the inverse sine of the cosine of pi over 6. Okay, so the cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So the inverse sine of square root 3 over 2 means what angle between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 has a sine of root 3 over 2. In other words, what angle on the left-hand side of our unit circle, sorry, the right-hand side of our unit circle, has a y-coordinate of root 3 over 2. And we see that that answer is pi over 3. And can you check yourself on Desmos? Why, yes, you can, because if you come over here and you say, all right, well, what's pi over 3? You see that that is exactly the same numerical approximation that Desmos gave you. But that is a numerical approximation. This is the exact answer, and that's what we're going to want unless, you are, unless it is not a known unit circle value. Okay, so let's do one for which we do not. So let's, let's do another one, because this one's a little tricky. Okay, so now we're asked to find... an exact value for the sine of the inverse tangent of 7 fourths. Well, hunky dunky do, dang it, because what's that mean? Well, this, this phrase, exact value, means a calculator answer is not going to cut it. And 7 fourths doesn't appear anything, anywhere, on my unit circle. So what am I going to do? Well, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remember that example I did a few minutes ago with a right triangle. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a right triangle. I'm going to pick an angle to label as theta. Well, I'll pick this one. doesn't really matter which one I pick. I tend to pick that one. And I remember Sokotoa. And I remember that the inverse tangent, if I'm looking for the inverse tangent of 7 fourths, that's going to equal the angle theta. That means, by definition, that the tangent of theta is 7 over 4. And remember that the tangent is the length of the side opposite divided by the length of the side adjacent. So this is 7 and this is 4. Now I can find my hypotenuse because I know that if we call this guy c, c squared equals 7 squared plus 4 squared. So that means that C equals the square root of 49 plus 16. My brain is a little fried. Let's figure out what 49 plus 16 is. Actually, let's make life simpler. Let's figure out what 7 squared plus 4 squared, whoops, 4 squared is 65. So square root 65. Now, 65 is not a unit, is not a perfect square. 65 does not have any perfect square factors because 65 is 5 times 13. Those are both prime numbers. So we can't reduce that. So we know that this now equals the square root of 65. Okay, don't put that into your calculator. Leave it as square root 65 because you want the exact value of the sign. So the sine of my angle, the, I've now got it set up so that the sine 
of the inverse tangent of 7 fourths, well, that's going to be the same thing as the sine of that angle theta that I marked on my triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and that is going to be 7 over the square root of 65. You may leave it like that, or if you prefer, you may rationalize your denominator. Either one of these is perfectly acceptable to me. Okay. I hope that this has been helpful. We're going to do one more exp example here, and then I'm going to stop this video. So I want to find, this is a little more involved, we're going to find a simplified expression for the cosine of the inverse sine of x over 3 as long as my x's are limited between negative 3 and 3. Why? All right, so it's because I need what's ever inside the inverse sine to be limited to the region between negative 1 and 1. Otherwise, inverse sine is not defined. So what the heck am I going to do? Well. If we had, we remember that the sine of the inverse sine is x. So if I could turn that cosine into a sine, then life would be okay. And we remember that cosine squared, yeah, we'll call it, okay, x. Well, let's use thetas here plus sine squared theta equals 1, right? And, and here's what else I know. I know the sine of the inverse sine. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, well, well let's, just, let's, just, let's just say that I'm going to find this angle. Call it theta. So the sine of that angle theta, because remember, remember what's the key here. Inverse trigonometric functions give me back angles. Inverse trigonometric functions work on ratios and give me angles. Trigonometric functions work on angles and give me ratios. So this means... This definition here means that the sine of theta equals x over 3. Oh, okay. So this means that cosine squared theta, which is the angle whose sine is x over 3, plus x over 3 squared equals 1. That means that cosine squared theta equals 1 minus x squared over 9, which means that cosine squared theta, let's, let's put all that over 1, so I've got 9 minus x squared all over 9, which means that cosine theta is going to be the positive or negative square root of 9 minus x squared all over 9, which simplifies to 1 third times the square root, positive or negative, of 9 minus x squared. But now we get to actually pick one. And, and how do we know which one to pick? Well, the key is in our inverse sine. So we know that inverse sine is limited to one half of the unit circle. Inverse sine is only going to give me angles 
on the right-hand side of the unit circle. Well, within that region, cosine is always positive. So we just need the positive square root. Okay, that wraps up this chapter. I hope this has been useful. If you have any questions, reach out to me and I'll do my best.